How's everyone doing today? Well, most homesteaders don't really show the other side of homesteading. They show the bright, happy side of it. So we've got an awesome cow, Daisy, here. Daisy had a baby a week ago. And uh, since then, she's had mastitis and she hasn't been eating very much. So we've had a tube feeder, which we're going to show you today. And um, she had a catheter in so we could put her meds in to her. It's been moving for right now. And uh, we're just going to tube feed her, show you today. But we've been keeping her in the barn stall here for most of the time to keep her kind of dry and warm to hopefully heal her up. But the cement floor here has been pretty brutal for her. It's pretty slippery. Usually we put lots of straw down, but it's still slippery. But our uh, farmhand Dean here, he was kind enough to buy some mats here to put down to kind of help her get up better when it's working, if it's underneath the right spot. And this is your little baby cow here, little heifer. I'm calling her baby moo for now because we don't have a name for her. But she's been working on sucking out all the milk, which isn't much in there now with the mastitis. But I think we've got lots of it out, all the pus and stuff. Hi, little baby Moo, how you doing? She's very affectionate and very adorable. But poor little Daisy here. We're going to put her outside today. So hopefully she uh, gets some fresh air. And we've been giving her meds for almost a week now. And I think she's improving a little bit. But most people probably would have given up by now. But we like her. We want her around. And she's an awesome cow. We've had her... For almost a year and a half now I think. I think this is her second cow she's had so she didn't have one. This is the first one she's had on the farm uh, but when Kristen gets out we'll film showing how to tube feed a cow because um, if you don't her stomach will flip. If it flips one way she could die. If she flips the other way then you have to do an operation. We've already spent like a thousand bucks on vet bills on her so we're doing everything we can to keep her stomach full and put probiotics and nutrients into her so she can stay stay alive. She's not really drinking a whole lot of water, a little bit here and there, and she hasn't really eaten anything in a week. So we're doing everything we can here. So we'll be back in a few minutes here when we get all the awesome equipment here to uh, get up here for Daisy. Uh, a whole bunch of vitamins and stuff. We have ketamine, propylene glycol, uh, probiotics, electrolytes, uh, yeast. And we've been doing this for what, almost four or five days now, I guess? Uh, well, she had one done by the vet before they taught me to tube her, and then we've been doing it since Saturday on our own, so it's that far, almost five yeah. days. So tubing's a lot easier than we thought it was. Yeah, she takes it really well, which is helpful. <laughs> yeah, she's a pretty easy cow, easy going cow. And here's some electrolytes or something, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's the baby move. And here's some ripple glycol. Okay. And we've got penicillin and, and multivitamin um, injectable that we're giving her too. But we're basically pumping her room in full of enough um, nutrients and fluid to keep it from twisting and keep it working enough that hopefully she'll recover. Yeah. Oh, Taco seems to want a little drink too, don't you, Taco? <laughs> Sometimes he likes to help. Oh, there's the baby Moo Moon. Hi, little baby Moo. Say hi, everybody. She's pretty adorable. So, yeah, so she mixes up a full thing of this, and then we mix it in a bucket of water. And then we have this tube here, garden hose we've got, with a nice funnel duct tape to it. And I think this is a one inch PVC pipe we have. Or maybe two inch. No, I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, I'm not sure, one or two inch. But we stick the tube into her mouth and into her throat. And then we stick the tube down, which we'll show you in a few minutes here. Once Kristen mixes up the little concoction of goodies. So she's just checking the udder right now because it's been pretty hard, the one quarter. So we've been trying to. Milk quarters. Try and milk it out as much as we can to strip it out of everything. Which basically isn't milking because there's very little we can get out. It's so swollen and inflamed because of the infection that um, if I'm lucky I can get like a squirt at a time or a few squirts at a time. But baby's also nursing too and trying to get it out. And she's much more productive than people are. So yeah. 
Um, it seems like the back quarter is starting to soften, but she did a bunch of damage to herself this morning trying to get up yeah. and she got stuck. Poor cow. So we're gonna stick her yeah. outside after we feed her quickly. So she can hopefully get some fresh air and hopefully dry out those wounds. Okay, should we get this uh, tube going? All right, so we just tied Daisy up to the post here and then you can come in probably closer if you want to get it. And all we do is open her mouth, or Kristen does this part. And, uh... <laughs> it's not the funnest of things, but it gets food into her stomach to keep yeah. her alive. Yeah. You just direct it a bit towards the left, because the esophagus is to the left side and we need to get down into her room and not into her lungs to the trachea so and once we get the tube down we can hear the gurgling which means it's into the right spot so now we just stick this down and she starts to swallow it just do it slowly the it's not nothing showing here. That's fine. It yeah, screen shuts off. off. Yeah. So now I can hear some gurgling, so that means it's pretty much almost there. Do I touch the screen? Or? No, just even And if it were in the lungs, it wouldn't be gurgling. But if you can hear the gurgles, you can blow air into the tube and listen with the stethoscope to her lungs and see if you hear air go into them. Okay, let's start it up. Oh, well, she's struggling today a bit with it. You're okay, Daisy. It's okay. okay. You might have to hold it too quickly in for us. All right, just got it. Here we go. So we're just gonna pour the mixture down. She's struggling a bit more today than normal. She's kind of. Part of it's baby's trying to headbutt her oh. sore side of her udder right now. That would do it. <laughs> Baby move. So I try to do this quickly as possible just to get it down so we can get the tube out of her. Eaten in, uh, Probably a week eight now. Days, nine days, eight days, almost nine days now. So this is the only thing keeping. Oh. Up. And the water is warm too. We don't want to put cold water down. Mostly just to dissolve all the stuff we put into it. We're almost there, Daisy. You okay there? Yeah. We're good? It's a little cold. Yeah, oh. yeah one more okay, quick one here. Okay. All right. And now we just pull it out slowly. There we go. So 
Troy Days. I'm just like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I have a, a big pee. <laughs> there we go. So that's how you two feed a cow. And that's how you keep one alive. So we've been doing that for like four or five days now. And hopefully she recovers. We're probably going to take her outside now to uh, let her enjoy the fresh air and take baby out with her. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoy this other side of homesteading that people generally don't show. But I just get to see all sides of it when you have animals because uh, some of these things you have to deal with. So we'll see you out there. Thanks for watching. Hit, us, hit the subscribe button, give us a like, and we'll see you out there.